Hello everyone, welcome to IPM IAS Academy's daily news highlights and today is 23rd September 2024. Let's see what are the important news for today's discussion and before that if you have not yet subscribed this channel please do subscribe the channel so that you will continue to get updates regarding civil services examination and current affairs. Quad Meet launches maritime and health initiatives. So this particular news is related with Quad. So the leaders of the Quad, they are India, US, Australia and Japan. They met in Delaware to launch maritime initiatives, including a Coast Guard exercise, maritime surveillance expansion and a logistics ne network to enhance disaster response. They also announced a joint project to combat cervical cancer. The Quad condemned aggressive actions in the East and South China Seas, particularly criticizing China's militarization and intimidation in disputed regions. They expressed concern over Coast Guard conflicts and disruptions to offshore resource exploitation by other nations. So this uh, organization is really, really important okay? because the main uh, members of this organization are India, US, Australia and Japan. So they were trying to address the problem that are actually created by China in the, in the South and the uh, East uh, Asian regions. We know that uh, South China Sea is always a conflictual region where China is really involved in that. So in order to address all these kinds of uh, issues, we have this organization called Quad. So based on this particular news, what you need to understand is what is Quad, when it was actually formed, what are the, the important objectives of this organization, what are the features of this organization and also regarding the recent summit the quad summit which was actually held at delaware us so what were the important decisions taken during that time you have to have an understanding regarding that based on this news you should also understand about the other regional organizations which are actually working for uh, uh, regional cooperation and also for uh, establishing peace and security in the world so this particular article is coming in page number one general studies two and it's a part of international relations the left leader Disan Nayake is Sri Lanka president. Anura Kumara Disan Nayake, the leader of the Sri Lanka's National People's Power Alliance, won the presidential election, signaling a major shift away from the long dominant Sri Lanka's Freedom Party, SLFP, and United National Party. So, this is a, um, a historic victory in the Sri Lankan country and we need to understand more about this election because the background of this election is very important. So what were the political tensions happening during that time? What were the economic uh, problems which were actually affecting these elections? So all those actually um, influence the decisions of the voters also. That is why we could see a new change in the Sri Lankan political scenario. So please do try to understand about the election and also about Anura Kumara Desanayake and what were his contributions for the betterment of Sri Lanka and also look at how our relation will be India Sri Lanka relation will be after um, he comes to power after he started his administration uh, how our relations will be India and Sri Lanka relation will be please to have an idea about it please to watch the, all the updates regarding India Sri Lanka relations also this particular article is coming in page number one general studies two and it's a part of international relations India needs a national security strategy. The need for national security strategy, that is India requires a comprehensive national security strategy to integrate diverse sectors like defense, finance and climate into a coherent whole. Prioritizing limited resources to protect sovereignty and strengthen economic stability and global tensions. So here this article is highly addressing the national security scenario of our country and the need for having a national security strategy which encompasses almost all the regions, all the areas. So we can see that defense is involved, finance is involved, climate is involved, environment parts are involved. So all these points coming together and forming a uh, security strategy for India is very crucial. That is what is highlighted in this particular article. So please do read about this article and understand more about it. So what are the complexities of multi-alignment? So India's strategic multi-alignment balancing relations uh, with groups like Quad and BRICS reflects the need for flexibility in managing threats, particularly from China while avoiding reliance on alliances or committing to singular power blocks. So very important to understand this because we have gone through a situation like Cold War where uh, the countries were actually heavily depending on a certain power 
uh, so that is USSR or USA they were actually uh, depending on a one particular block so that is not that should not be the situation of India so India should have our own uh, policies and strategies for it India always have that also we are not depending on any other country because we are sovereign we are we are actually enjoying that internal sovereignty as well as external sovereignty but still when we are actually comprehensively looking at the uh, the security scenario involving defense finance and climate and all then we should be really aware and we should be very careful about forming a strategy the defense challenges the india's defense strategy must address vulnerabilities in submarine and shipbuilding capacities to enhance its indo pacific presence a public nss might uh, expose such weakness and emphasizing the importance of maintaining secrecy for national security concerns so we know that this particular article is actually addressing all the areas they address the defense area they address the economic area they address the the complexities in the multi alignment they address the, uh, the the importance of climate so all these areas are actually addressed in this article so please read this article and try to have a different perspective regarding forming a national security strategy for India. So this particular article is coming in page number 8, General Studies 3 and it's a part of internal security. Sri Lanka's verdict. So the, the same news we have already discussed in the, in the first uh, page. So Anura Kumara Desanayake of the National People's Power has won Sri Lanka's ninth presidential election, signaling a shift from traditional parties and his victory reflects the people's desire for change with a focus on addressing economic challenges. So based on that, this what you need to understand is uh, what is India's relation with Sri Lanka and how it is going to be after this election, how is it, it is going to be and the present uh, situation regarding Tamils in uh, Sri Lanka because that is a very important area that we need to address. So the Disanayake's presidency must balance economic reforms with inclusive governance. He promises provincial council elections appealing to Tamil communities and ensuring foreign relations particularly with India while pledging to abolish the controversial executive presidency system. So very important. So he has actually shown positive remarks especially in connection with the relation with India and also uh, the, the situation of Tamil in the country so please try to understand more about it and uh, because this is a very crucial area why because the elections just happened in uh, Sri Lanka so this particular article is coming in page number 8 general studies 2 and it's a part of international relations professional Indian women work the most hours globally so very important article which actually highlights the, the situation of women in their working sphere especially there are a lot of discussions going on related to the the, the work culture the work, work pressure uh, for women in our country the work hours and stress in india indian women professionals particularly in it and scientific fields work the most hours globally with young women working over 55 hours weekly the tragic death of anna sebastian highlights growing concerns about excessive work stress in india so read this article and understand more about the statistics regarding the work hours the the work tensions and the work pressures that the indian women is actually uh, facing the younger indian women aged 15 to 24 bear the brunt of overwork with it and scientific professionals in this group logging the highest work hours their intense workload is accentuated by male dominated environments in these fields so it's a very important article because it addresses the gender imbalance it addresses the gender problems also the the problems faced by uh, women in their working environment already we were all, all discussing about the HEMA committee in relation with the atrocities against women in, in, in film industry so uh, in, on the basis of that we can also relate this uh, to such a kind of a pressure that the women are actually going through in their uh, working sphere so please read this article and under, understand more about the the statistics regarding the problems indian women is actually facing in their working environment so this particular article is coming in page number nine general studies two and it's a part of indian polity and governance judicial appointments and disappointments so judicial appointments must balance independence with accountability we are krishna Iyer emphasizes that judge as interpreters of the constitution must be selected based on their clear principles ensuring they uphold democratic values while avoiding the class biases and public criticism.
The Supreme Court's collegium system for selecting judges has faced criticism for lacking transparency and accountability. Iyer argues that a judicial commission independent of political influence is needed to ensure merit-based appointments in line with constitutional values. So, this article is mainly highlighting the judicial appointments in our country. So, you have to have an idea about how the judges are actually appointed in our country. That is a very crucial um, area we need to address. So one is the uh, Supreme Court's collegium system. So, when you are trying to understand this system, you should also have an idea about the NJAC, which was actually there for uh, some time uh, in the judicial appointments uh, area. So, uh, how the judicial uh, appointments are actually happening? How is the selection process? On what basis they are actually selected? We know one thing very clear that uh, Indian judiciary should be integrated and independent. So, independence of judiciary should be maintained, then only we can expect justice in our system. So, that is what is highlighted in this particular article. So, please read this article and understand more about it. So, here the judiciary's independence is essential, but unregulated autonomy can lead to arrogance. Iyer calls for constitutional discipline through mechanisms ensuring judges accountability, ethical conduct and adherence to democratic principles without compromising judicial sovereignty. So, this is a very crucial area that uh, uh, the author is actually addressing. So, one is the parliamentary sovereignty, you, you might be knowing about it and then another area is the ju judicial sovereignty or the judicial supremacy. So, you have to have an idea about how this is actually working, how this balance is actually happening in our country, you have to have an idea and that balance is actually happening based on the uh, the constitution and the constitutional provision. These are some of the important articles for today's discussion and, and uh, if you find it useful, please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they will also continue to get updates regarding civil services examination and current affairs.